Okay, is it working? I think it is working every day. Each time it's a, it's a new lesson. Welcome to our... I think it's our fourth, maybe fifth uh, stream. And uh, I am joined today by Anjuli, which who is charming, but I have not interacted nearly enough with you uh, in real life. We barely <laughs> saw each other uh, at the podcast. And could you introduce yourself to the people watching us today? Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Anjali, a uh, geek girl bookworm online everywhere. Uh, I talk random stuff about RPGs, miniature painting, and general nerdy fun times. Yay! Yay! <laughs> So Yay. we've been talking quite a bit uh, actually before the the stream started. You were you were a bit there a bit early, and for once uh, things were simpler on the OBS side for me. Uh, one of the things you were explaining is that you are completely isolated. You're 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 alone at home. I'm in the somewhat opposite situation. I mean, I'm not in a house share, but uh, I'm in a couple, and we got a two years old. So instead of being uh, lacking stimulus <laughs> so I'm, uh, we are kind of um, yeah uh, we got a sensory overload of uh, what a two years old can do uh, in an in interior I, I need I'm gonna need to repent all those walls once we're over and we're taking this moment gladly today he's sleeping so that's that's a great rest <laughs> and so uh, it's much easier for my wife to work and for me to to stream a, a little uh yeah so uh yeah. yeah i guess to start with uh you 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 were telling me you you um yeah th there's a lot of new vocabulary so technically what i'm doing is social distancing but you've been literally self quarant signing is that the way it's pronounced yes yeah, quarantined yeah. yeah 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 so i've i've been at home on my own for over two weeks now so even before the lockdown uh, my office we all decided that we were going to go and work from home because we could and um, we there's that we're only a small team and we work very close together so if one of us was to get it then um we'd all get it so we decided with a couple of us who have got um also immune disease and asthma and things we just all start working from home straight away. Um, but most people that's okay, like most uh, are in relationships and or married and uh, yeah, I'm on my own. <laughs> I moved to Nottingham in January. Um, so I don't, I don't know a lot of people here. I know a few people like mainly war gamer types uh, from like games workshop and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, uh, I've been pretty much on my own <laughs> and I've got used to my company. Yeah, so. Actually, it's the first week was horrible. I, like, I was like, I don't like this at all. But now I'm a bit like, well, I got to just get on with it. <laughs> I'm here on my own. I've got the birds. I can talk to my, my cockatiels, but that's about it. Are you catching up so. with this legendary backlog of miniatures that needs to be painted before you can purchase anything new? So are you going to go through that and paint everything? <laughs> I wish. And finally paint the last one and be like, yeah, no, I can go to the shop. I can order something. <laughs> It's never going to happen. Um, unfortunately, I have a whole room that is filled with unpainted miniatures. Like, yeah, um, I don't think I'm ever, ever, ever going to finish <laughs> painting up everything. I'm doing some in the evenings, but because I'm still working nine to five, um, I'm not painting sort of during the day at all. So I don't I'm not getting to, to paint up all of my hobby stuff. But I am going to do some live streaming tonight because um, I miss Sunday's stream. So I'm going to do a little bit of painting tonight online which would, be, which would be very nice so Sweet. actually you're in the category a bit like me when we are a bit somewhat jealous of we, we're lucky uh to I, i'm not working from home but i'm taking care of my son my wife is working from home which is lucky in terms of income but in terms of looking on the internet on twitter to all these people catching up on shows on netflix yeah. uh playing animal crossing there's there's very little time for us to do any of that. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, I get to, I do get to play Animal Crossing in the morning. That's my I get thirty minutes before before work while I have my breakfast. Play some Animal Crossing and go to work. I'm not playing Animal yeah, Crossing, but it sounds like a lot of work. You you actually work for Tom Nook, which is a yeah, as far as I understand, a <laughs> capitalist landlord of some kind. 
<laughs> he really is. <laughs> he doesn't pay you, and you have to work for him for free. <laughs> it's very stressful. <laughs> I've got so many debts to pay off. <laughs> is he running Sports uh, Direct or some or Virgin or something like that? <laughs> He he's definitely the Richard Branson of the <laughs> Animal Crossing world. So we were discussing a bit earlier about our uh, concern. Uh, uh, we we both had plans for UK Games Expo this year. Uh, hopefully we still have, but we don't really know where it's going. So or, or are you dealing with that? I, I was also mentioning to you. So correct me if I'm wrong because I might confuse I, I confuse things all the time. But I'm confused. MCM London Comic Con and Expo. So Expo is supposed to happen in July now. Uh, no, so MCM is happening in July. Okay. So so yeah, there was the May. So both of them were happening on the same day in May, um, and then both were postponed. So MCM has been pushed back to mid July, and then Expo is at the end of August, so 21st of August. Well, we'll see um, how things go for, for Expo, but I was reading today that the Edinburgh Book Festival, which is supposed to take place in August, has been postponed as well or cancelled completely. So we'll yeah. see how it goes to Expo. Uh, MCM are... Yeah, I'm... Yeah, yeah I was going to say, I'm also like... Uh, so XL and also the NEC, which is where the two different events are happening, they've been... They'll be turned into field hospitals. So um, they probably, come July, are still not they're still going to probably be hospitals um and i don't imagine that will change till sort of the end of the year so part of me is thinking that they're probably going to have to be cancelled um i hope not but um yeah i'm having to put in contingency plans for if that should happen it's really mind-boggling it's really mind-boggling to think of that and uh, to see the the videos and the pictures online if people watching this uh, haven't seen them uh, i recommend to to Google them, it's it's very impressive the work being pulled out by uh, um, engineers, construction workers, and uh, um, uh, what do you call that health specialist turning uh, yeah. the XL here in London in a in a field hospital, which they call the Nightingale Hospital. It's I mean yeah. it's crazy uh, seeing this place. I've been to with so many Critical Role fans uh, a couple of years ago, and. Uh, and yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so, what are your contingency plans there, and what what did you add in store for for this? So, um, for, so if UK Games Expo goes on, uh, then we have we we launch in um, our newest books. Um, so, for anyone that doesn't know, Aconite books. We are um, Part of Asmodee, which is the world's largest board game, card game, RPG distributor and creator uh, in the world. Um, and we are a small imprint publishing house um, through Asmodee. So we are writing novels set in a lot of the Asmodee owned um, intellectual properties, Arkham Horror, Legend of the Five Rings, Keyforge, um, etc. And we are launching um, some of our new novels. It was meant to be in May, so just in time for UK Games Expo. Um, but now Expo has been pushed back. We're actually going to push our whole launch back until September time. Um, so we're hoping we'll be able to launch a couple of books at uh, UK Games Expo um, with a small stall, um, possibly some author signing and things as well, which would be lovely if we could get that. Um, and we're also going to do some panel interviews about turning uh, worlds that already exist out there into um, novels so taking an IP that already exists in the world and then turning it into a novel um, how you can uh, get around the canon that's already there and sort of increase and develop the law that already exists for fans um, so if we if we don't get to do ex expo I'm hoping we can still do those panels but just online instead um, through streams and such and the like. Um, we're also going to try and do some Q and A's uh, with the rest of the uh, publishing team and some of the authors, and just have maybe yeah, just a little launch party, <laughs> like in our own houses on our own, <laughs> just party poppers. 
yeah, well, it's, we can uh, still make it festive uh, online. We can we can yeah, have filters, exactly. you know. Uh, when you have the the face yeah. of a anime deer of some kind or something like that. Uh, yeah. Some it happened to some priest in Italy. Uh, they were streaming a mass for the first time, and they they forgot to switch off the the Snapchat or. Or Instagram oh, yeah. filter. <laughs> so I think it actually it even happened in Iron, I think, like like a very sort of grim meeting being broadcasted and the filter was on. Anyway, yeah, we, we were also supposed to have a panel at Expo about uh tabletop roping games and Dungeons and Dragons explained to parents. And uh yeah, we we it will at least be taking place online if it's not uh, taking place live. I need to yeah. to get in touch with the, the expo team to to see how things are and maybe we we can sub, swap days. I was supposed to do that on Friday because I couldn't be Saturday because I was supposed to be at MCM Comic Con. But now yeah. that it's on different weekend, maybe you could do the Saturday for which there there are more people. Uh, yeah. I did, of course, it's still happening. Uh, and uh, one thing about that, I was telling you about that. That I wanted to take this opportunity to to express my support to organizers of events anywhere and and say uh, I mean I understand the, the frustrations of fans on Twitter and on social media but I would invite everyone to to sort of to do what tabletop role players do well as opposed to doing well which is put yourself in somebody else's shoes <laughs> and realize how much yep. uh, or difficult. A decision it is to say what well, we're going to postpone or cancel uh first of all we're in the complete unknown and second it's uh it's not just a decision for for people attending and it's no fun and it's not it's not like a thing I, i'm correct to say that uh, the people running events like that are not exactly uh uh making that much money you know <laughs> They're not disney yeah. marvel or so and that there, there are a lot of jobs on the lines uh there's a there's the, the very survival of those events uh which are uh linked to those decisions so so it's it's really tough and there's probably insurance issues as well so they, they cannot cancel before before they're instructed to by the government which is which was the issue with yeah for instance hospitality uh here in the uk when the government advised to close but did not give the yeah. instruction to close which meant that uh, yeah but how does that work with my insurance because if i'm advised i say yeah maybe i should uh your insurance is not running so yeah it's a, a very a lot of very dramatic decision at the same time very nitty-gritty down to earth uh things which are the reality of organizing yeah. uh something but but tell me uh tell me about that that law uh, of your universe because I'm not familiar with, with with that I've seen it on the the counter at Bad Moon Cafe but uh, I never played the game so uh, for so for what Keyforge yeah uh, yeah Key is that Forge. the one you're after yeah yeah Keyforge yeah. I mean sorry uh, unless so you want to react to what I was saying uh, I'm blabbering no, uh, no I, I think I, I I agree like I think it's been really difficult for people to um, to make the decisions that they've had to make and then and I think for a lot of smaller, uh, like, game stores and things, it, it is a worry for them. Are, have, are they going to pay for this, you know, the UK Games Expo, are they going to pay their deposits for their stands and then it be cancelled and it's going to be difficult for them to get their money back and things. And I think a lot of a lot of people are worried. And I know that I've had, like, some people contact me on Twitter um, and ask sort of what we're doing as Aconite um, just because they're worried and you know we're small and, and they're small. Um, I mean, as far as like we're concerned, we're planning ahead as if UK Games Expo is going on um, and we'll just have to see like what happens um, and just plan around that. But for, for a lot of smaller companies, I know it's a really big worry because if they all drop out and then Expo doesn't go ahead, then who's, who's to say if it will happen next year at all if they lose up all their money? You know the UK's biggest games convention could stop, and that would be incredibly sad. It's yeah, one of my favourite things. And and everyone organising anything at the moment is in that situation. I mean, it's it's kind kind of a sad discussion, but I just meant name drop Bad Moon Cafe, which is our local uh, friendly yes. game store, which I was I'm so happy to have in my neighbourhood. Uh, uh, I I'm, I'm I don't know they they're gonna deal with the situation. Uh, I don't know any restaurants in the area. I'm confident 
restaurants will at worst reopen, but I'm not sure it will be the one yeah. which used to be there. What's the situation of people there? I mean, I've never been involved in a... I mean, no, no, uh, yeah, I hope all of these people won't have to go yes. as far as having a bankruptcy s situation. Uh, if it does, ex I hope their private, uh, what do you call that, uh, savings are separate from the one from their company. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's a complete unknown for, for, for so many people. And um... yeah, it's it is really worrying and because like within the the rpg community like most people i know and probably you know are all sort of self-employed people who are who are working doing the things that they love and now are finding that it's drying up and that's that's really worrying for me as well like seeing a lot of my friends who make miniatures and things not getting um their online orders that they would be getting because other people are losing their jobs and things and it's it's really scary i'm i'm i am worried for what um come out at the other end so you're already seeing such a knock-on effect because I, I would not expect but hope that because people are at home and a, a substantial number of, of them have now opportunities to work from home uh, they might be they might be ordering miniatures to, to paint at home and have them delivered but uh, you, you already see uh, your customers drying up on that yeah, I mean, for me, as like I'm, I'm, I had to close my Etsy store down just because I couldn't get out of the house. There's no point me keeping it open and not being able to paint anything because I was sick, and also not being able to go out and send the stuff. But um, other people I've spoken to, uh, their their orders are okay. They're not like drying up, but they can see that in yeah, you know, at the moment it's a novelty. Oh, at home, yeah, let's do some painting. But if this carries on for another month or two or three, <laughs> then people are going to have not been working for a long period of time. There's not going to be a novelty. Savings are going to start drying up and people are not going to be wanting to buy toys and things to keep themselves entertained. So, yeah, I think it's like for a lot of my friends, it's a big worry. Yeah, I wonder if, well, it's it's for my industry. I, I'm an architect and when this the situation uh, happened, I was already unemployed and my wife started to work from home quite early under the instruction of a employer was quite wise there and they did that worldwide but um yeah i'm one i still got a call from a recruiter yesterday i'm wondering if at some point my own industry will not exactly resume their normal activity but will say okay we need to get back at working it's just we'll do it differently yeah. which is working from home and hiring new people who will work from home from day one and will have almost no contact with no no person to person contact so i'm curious to see yeah. how a number of industry will say okay this is the new normal until things change and yeah and we'll get back at it because when i hear that this could last for for six months uh yeah. it's i mean it's yeah it's uh, it's a historic moment and uh, we we haven't seen we haven't been something like that as a civilization ever so yeah so we'll see uh yeah, it's definitely you... interesting yeah. times yeah <laughs> have you managed to, to find yourself a a routine mm -hmm. uh, myself i'm just starting this week uh, i know i started to trying to exercise on my own uh, and i was missing the, mm. the gym i'm not very good to self-motivate but i did find the the way to to do it and and i got the the streams every two days how do you do you manage your your day-to-day -day, um, activities um besides uh, most of it's the same. In the i make sure i yeah i make sure i get up at exactly the same time as if i was going to the office um luckily my office normally is only a 20 minute walk away so it's not that far so i don't get up that early <laughs> but yeah i just give myself the walking time i do my animal crossings <laughs> That's my spare time. And then um, I work and I take my lunch at the normal time. Um, and then at three o'clock, I, I go out. There's a park just down my road uh, with a duck pond. So I go down, to, walk down to the park, have a couple of laps of the park, uh, feed the ducks. And um, yeah, and then come back and work for a couple more hours. And then, yeah, depending what the day is, I do some painting or some streaming. Um, it's, it's, my my routine is pretty much the same. I've never been to the gym, so <laughs> I don't miss that. 
I do miss going to Warhammer World for the they used, they do a uh, workshop painting workshop every other Thursday, but Warhammer World is closed, obviously, so can't do that. So I've had to um, some of the people that I know there. We we did a painting stream the other day where we all went online and sort of just like we're painting our own things, but just had someone to chat to while we were doing it, and that was really nice. So what was that public? Yeah. Is it Warhammer? So it's the people from the... Warhammer World get banding together to to have a virtual meetup uh, instead of the physical one yeah it was it was you know offline it was just people that i normally would see there and we just all just skyped in with each other and just chatted and showed off what we were painting and just carried on it wasn't there was no like on my stream i've got like the, my drop down camera so you can see what i'm painting as well as my face this was just our faces and just like hold up i'm really like oh look at this <laughs> um, but it was it was just nice to have people to talk to whilst you're painting because like it's it is a lonely hobby um most of the time which is why i started streaming because i was like i need to talk to someone whilst i'm doing this i'm so alone <laughs> but yeah it, that was a really nice thing so hopefully i can keep doing that and catching up with people that way so you uh you were supposed to be at my table one evening on world 20 and you You gave me a rain check last minute, which is <gasps> terrible. Uh, have you played any on other table online role playing games? I have at the not at the not in the last three weeks, just because I've been sick. But um, I play on Scrat's channel quite a bit. Uh, oh, Scratch cool. Scratch Academy. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I did a couple of campaigns with him, and I've done a lot of jumping in. I've done some DMing with him. Um, I have a couple of offline online games, so we don't stream, we just hang out together. Um, but we are starting a stream of Tales from the Loop, I think, next week, which will be quite fun. And we're streaming that one. Um, I get to play a popular girl, which is going to be a big task for me to <laughs> be the popular girl. Come on, nasty. you're a popular girl. girl. Dragon means so many people not... wanted to meet you. <laughs> no, but at school I was not a popular girl. I was a terrible nerd who no one wanted to talk to. <laughs> so I don't know how to act like a popular girl who's 15. <laughs> I was hiding in the art corridor. Yeah, waiting for everyone to go home so I didn't get things thrown at me. No. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna be, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Um, but yeah, I haven't had much else actually. Because well, it sounds like quite a sick. lot already. <laughs> it, it, yeah, like for me, it's not like normally I have a couple of in real life games going on and a couple of other online games or I'm planning something or writing something. And since I moved to Nottingham, it sort of fizzled out a bit because like I don't know anyone in order to have in-house games. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little, yeah, upsetting in that respect. But yeah, I... I will get some more games in, I'm sure. Now that I'm feeling better and, yeah, in need of <laughs> company. <laughs> well, I will be running, uh, again, Cats of Cthulhu, and uh, hopefully this time you, you'll be able to join. And uh, yeah, I yes. should be even better because I had to practice run now so with two amazing players. Yeah, but... exactly. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> no, I was it's... so sick. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, know, I, mean, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you, you literally had... Uh, COVID-19, uh, so I mean, what what better rain check could it be? I mean, if you made yes, up that that's, excuse, that's it's very bold of you, but uh... <laughs> yeah. Does, that uh, was, yeah. Does anyone in the chat room, we got a few people in the chat room, which is awesome, does anyone in the chat room hey. would have questions? Because it was advertised as a uh, ask me anything, so people go ahead yeah. and ask it, because people have been discussing the quality of my bandwidth, which is terrible. <laughs> So if you watch that on YouTube, it should be much better because it's recorded directly by OBS on my computer. But if you're watching it right now on uh, on Twitch, it should be something like yeah. very uh, no question. Ask us questions. <laughs> Even if you don't get the answers now, you can watch it on YouTube and get the answers. In the meantime, you mentioned Tales from the Loop. I think it's a good time to to yeah. stream again because there's a there's a show coming. I think. Or is There it is. Out yeah, I'm really. Uh, I think it's next uh, next week, maybe Amazon. I need to check. Um, yeah, that's. I'm really excited about that because uh, last October I went to Essen with Free League. I worked with them for a week. Um, 
sort of worked on their stand with them and hung out with them for the cool. week. It was really, really cool. And they were talking about the Tales on the Loop TV show and like how much like sort of time and money and like Amazon had put into the show and how they really wanted it to be like the art books and be like the role play game and they worked really really close with free league for it so i think it's going to be it's going to be really good I think. so they, they did work they, with they free were... league because I, I remember i i'm not super aware of the the history of tales from the loop but there, there were first there was the art and there was a yes. role playing game and the person who did the art from who the the original idea emerged uh made novels and apparently that that artist which which i can understand i'm not judging but he was a bit frustrated that when the announcement for the tv show were coming out people would say oh it's based on the role-playing game and he would say no 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 it's based on my novels and my art yeah. it's not based on the role-playing game i'm the creator yeah, people, of all of that yeah people sort of didn't realize that it's I've got the art books I've had the art books for years they're beautiful um and that's how, when Tales from the Loop came onto Kickstarter I was like I know that artwork um and I was really excited for Tales from the Loop because of uh, Simon's artwork uh yeah and the books the art books themselves are like it's like a diary of his life in growing up in Sweden with these loops these scientific um much like the role play game follows these loops that are built in the the town and they allow certain technological advances he sort of talks about it in the same way and he's done these beautiful uh, oil paintings based around photos of his own youth and he's just added robots and things into them and made them a bit strange um so yeah the the tv show is going to be based on both the art books and also the the role play because he's uh uh Niels who who writes the role play books um has had a lot of input into it as well so it's cool i guess um, it's a bit yeah. of a situation like my my good old star wars d6 from west end games which uh they develop a lot of stuff after the release of the three original star wars movies which were then used as the bible for people writing official novels for Star Wars and yeah. then later on even the movies like on oh, The Force Awakens I was happy that there was mention of the model of the Millennium <laughs> Falcon which was actually I knew created for the role playing game so I was like oh they they, they went to their to oh, their sources same. or That's at good. least there's a chain of events which made that thing uh, show up in, in things uh, yeah I could I could Disney Plus also uh, at the moment uh there's a lot of stuff to watch there. It's a bit weird. It's it. There's a lot, and at the same time, it's it's oddly specific. I mean, of course, it's it's Disney, yeah. but uh, it's it's kind of missing. Uh, I don't know. I was hoping there would be a bit more Fox stuff. Like there, there's no, you won't find the the Alien movies or <laughs> or the production from yeah. Fox Studio over there. It's still very uh, family friendly focused and even if you have the the marvel which are slightly 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 more more adult i finally watched uh, captain marvel with uh, my wife and i was very happy she enjoyed yeah. it yeah i'm currently going through it and watching them all in chronological order so chronological the, the so did you field. start with first avenger or chronological of release uh, so first Avenger. So I started in the 1940s nice. <laughs> and then did Captain Marvel in the 1990s and then uh, Incredible Hulk, both Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, Thor. I don't know what's next. I need to check my list. But yeah, <laughs> I I'm know, working my way. I would probably get I'm Hulk. Working my way through them. Yeah, apparently Hulk is set after Iron Man 1, uh, which was a bit confusing. So there was some debate. Someone said, like, it's undis this un sort of disclosed time frame so like a couple of websites put it before and a couple of it after so i just went with before but yeah i'll just do it now are you excited mm -hmm. for for one of the tv shows they're gonna release is there one which interests you most um you know, wonder vision uh, falcon and um the winter soldier this sort of things no not I don't really watch the Marvel TV shows. I started trying to watch S.H.I.E.L.D. and I sort of watched a little bit and then got bored of it. And I haven't watched any of the other ones at all. S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, is... I like the film. Yeah, yeah. S.H.I.E.L.D. I is a... I think, I think the new show is going to be much closer to the movies. Uh, I think okay. at least that's the plan and maybe a bit more 
not essential but interesting to watch I think that they will take more stuff from those new TV shows into the actual movies uh, that's the plan but yeah, yeah Agents yeah. of S.H.I.E.L.D. I, I didn't watch all of it but I remember season 1 I found on probably io9 there was a, a list of the episodes you should watch <laughs> and it was yeah. like I don't know a third of maybe 50% of the episodes and the others you didn't need to watch it and uh, it, it really helped watching it because there was a lot of it's it's long seasons it's uh, 22 episodes yeah. and there's a lot of of padding in there it's a it's a bit um, it's a bit annoying still no question we got people but nothing uh, maybe they, Ask they, me they, anything. they got bored by by a bandwidth and they left I don't know where oh, it, no. I don't see where <laughs> OBS, OBS doesn't tell me how many people there are or oh, users in chat. Let me check. I'm learning. Well, I can happily I'm talk on about people. Curve. Curve. <laughs> Come on, Axel underscore roll, Commander Root and Lurks. <laughs> you probably have questions. <laughs> Don't be shy. We lost Don't Simet. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, one of the things I'm working on is... Yeah, Keyforge. Uh, yeah, my Keyforge one shot. So um, Keyforge is a new-ish card game uh, created by uh, FFG um, and also the guy that, uh, so um, I forget his name, something Garfield, uh, who created Magic the Gathering. So he designed a new card game um, called Keyforge, where every deck you buy is a unique deck. Um, so no two decks are the same. It's not like deck building, like with Magic, where you gather lots and lots of cards together and build your own deck. This is you buy a pack. The deck that you pack, you buy in the pack, is your deck. Uh, you don't get to swap cards in and out. So okay. um, they should, in theory, all be balanced. Some play better than others against particular decks. Um, and it's set in uh, the Crucible. And the Crucible is this weird hodgepodge planet um, where the Archons, who are like the gods, grabbed the bits they found most interesting of all the different planets in this universe and smushed them together in this big planet. So you can be walking along the crucible and it'd be um, very uh, metropolitan. And then all of a sudden it will change into these, this swampy area without any warning because you've crossed over the line to the next bit of a planet where it's been smushed in and it was a swampy planet. Um, so it's a very strange world to live in and you get little hints of what the world's like on the Keyforge cards um there's like you know the little filler bit like with magic the gathering is so it tells you a little bit about the world but not a lot um and uh they decided to write a um an rpg called the secrets of the crucible um which is using the genesis ffg system uh, that they use for star wars and things cool and yeah so they use that system and they've written a whole uh, book about the different factions that are there, the different worlds, different settings, creating your characters and things. So you can run an RPG in the world of Keyforge. Um, and we have used that book, uh, Aconite Books, to create a anthology of uh, Keyforge short stories um, with authors um, from like the Black Library and such uh, to create fun, silly, fantastical short stories um, using the the RPG and it's it's really it's really good fun um, and you can you can request a uh, a review copy should you want one just ping a message over to Aconite Books on Twitter and I'll get that sorted for you um, but yeah I'm going to be writing for our launch a a one shot that's sort of based in one of the worlds that the authors have already created for the anthology um, and hopefully be able to play it in person but if not we'll play it online um with some of the authors and some people from the community and we'll just have a silly fun time playing uh, some keyboard which uh, i'm really excited about because it's it's this daft place full of anything can happen and i'm really excited for the silliness to to come along yay <laughs> so it's the world is a bit like a quilt uh, blanket. Yes. You got patches from different worlds, so you could be a uh, uh, Iron Age level or even Stone Age level of civilization or lack of civilization, and, uh, yeah. and show up and become. Next door is a high tech Star Trek level of technology, and your your Guntar, the 
<laughs> barbarian. It, it, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's different groups that live in different, like, will stay in different worlds. But there's like there's really good dynamics between some of the different factions of alien that live on this planet together, um, which have made for some really good storytelling. And um, yeah, um, there's a there's one story which I love. It's about uh, so the idea is that within the Keyforge, the game, you're sending, um, you have your, you're sending your particular faction out to destroy the other faction and win uh, points and impress the Archons, the gods. Um, and so one of the stories written was about a LARP. And so these people, <laughs> this, this group of LARPy, like beardy old men, just, they, they reenact the, the Keyforge card battles um, uh, in the Crucible uh, and they get sucked into it real life and so they're, they're really ill-equipped for, for fighting in this Crucible but they get stuck in it and they have to um, yeah they have to do uh, all the defeating and I just I just love that it's in a LARP <laughs> and they're just these old guys with like sticks and then they have to try and defeat people it's really funny <laughs> it reminds me of a saga i need to to finish uh, in a novel um i think the author was named jose farmer and it's called river world and it was limited to the human civilization and history but the concept was that this you had this world with this big long river and uh, one day everybody wakes up along it uh stark naked but it's all the human beings who ever lived who show up there. And apparently this kind of a... It's probably put there by some aliens, but uh, you have a corner with Slavic individuals from the 4th century. There's weird mixes when they... On purpose, they mix people from different ages. you got clusters. Usually you got mm -hmm. a large cluster of people from a certain era just next to a smaller cluster of people from a different place in the world and time and uh, this river passed through it so if you follow the river you encounter all those those crazy people and of course in the novel you, you would run into um, famous people from all through history who had a chance to to interact uh, with one another yeah. uh, we got the, the RPG Academy who uh, thank you so much they are uh, hosting us and they got some questions we got some from the faculty was asking us which freely game do you think is the best of them all oh i think they know that i love free league and i can't choose <laughs> um i do love tales from the loop um and i feel like i should say as i was a playtester for alien i do really like the alien rpg <laughs> my name is in the book i'm very excited did you but, play um, both uh one shot and campaigns uh, i'd be very curious to play the campaign i've only mode. played it as i've not played it as a campaign i've only played it for the, the cinematic one shots and they that works so well i i don't i don't even know how you might play it as a campaign i haven't actually read the book through as a campaign <laughs> but i just i love the cinematic um element to it because it, it has to end in three acts and so you have to push people along and everyone knows that they're probably gonna die because you know there's an alien somewhere <laughs> you just hope you don't open you're not the first one to open the door where the aliens sit in um but every time i played it even the first one i was the only one that survived that was good and then, then the other times i've played it i've always died at least twice um but I had so much fun with it. You can you can die in glory and come back as another character, and it's absolutely fine. Okay, I was wondering if you had a kind of a, a alien resurrection type of uh, situation when they they brought <laughs> you back as the clone uh, with mixed DNA with uh, <laughs> no. an alien. Oh, maybe. This That's definitely an expansion. I feel. <laughs> this movie's got a bad rap. I, I I haven't seen it in a while, but I thought it was it was okay. Uh, it, it was written in part by Joss Whedon, and you can definitely tell the there's a Firefly flavor flavor to it. And it had a French director. Yeah. I liked Alien Resurrection. I mean, compared to most Alien versus Predators, I uh, think yeah, I played I played Alien uh, once. It was mastered by. Jonathan from the London RPG community who uh, takes charge of our, our newsletter. Uh, hello, Jonathan, if you're watching this. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was very good fun uh, to play. I believe the we 
Yeah, we played the one shot, which is included in the core book. Was that written by the, the team of uh, the Effect podcast? Yes, yes, that was Matthew and uh, D Dave, David, Dave, Dave. Yes, who Matthew ran one of the playtests when we were doing the playtest, so he did all the playtest in uh, GMM. So uh, I was in his group for that because he he used to live re like around the corner from me, but now I've moved away. Um, it's very yeah, cool. This I've been on their podcast a few times. <laughs> it's very cool. This synergy with the, this podcast, which is very dedicated to free league and uh, and free league and uh, having Matthew and. Uh, Having the two of them uh, run the the stand uh, at Dragon Meat, but Free League, I mean, yeah. they they got so much now, and they got more coming up. Uh, I always confuse them a bit with Modifius, which I know is a bit uh, can be yeah. annoying for people. Because Free League, so Modifius used to sell Free League stuff. That's why it's yeah, and then yeah, yeah but the so Free um, League we got so we got Tales from the Loop, we got Mutant Near Year Zero, we got Alien. Yep. We got something and else. Six of the Flood, Simba Room. Simba Room, uh, of course. Simba Room, which, yep. Um, and uh, Forbidden Lands. Yeah, yeah. It's Forbidden Lands have. looks very cool. I would really like to try yeah, this. Yeah, I like Forbidden Lands. Yeah, that's that's fun. I did, um, I did a game of that last year, UK Games Expo as well. That was good. Um, well, so they've got the Crusader Kings board game. And then they have the Tales from the Loop board game that's coming on to Kickstarter soon. And they have Vassen, which is the new RPG that was kickstarted at the end of last year. I think they announced something um, with a license also not too long ago. I don't remember what. Oh, yes. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh, and it's gone. It, it's it's <laughs> yeah, not Dune because that's more diffuse and uh, Guild Force yeah. Life, but Free League. Tell me oh, oh, the... it's the Lord of the Rings. Oh, Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh, yeah, and they're using. They're gonna keep the system of the the previous edition of Lord of the Rings of One Ring, which I yes. thought was a good news. It's a bit of a pity for Cubicle Seven, which are uh, awesome people, but at least they they get they're keeping the original um, the rules because I really like the this rule system. Have you ever tried One Ring? I've not. I've not played that one before. But it's really it's nice. It's been on my list. I, I really like playing it. it. It somehow managed to. To really get the the feel of you, you're not playing Dungeons and Dragons. You're playing in the, in the the Tolkien books, and there's this feeling yeah. of it's about travel and uh, and uh, it's, it's funny. It's about uh, oh the psychology of characters, or you support one another, and uh, there's nothing like uh, mentions of depressions of this sort, of, like, like literally, but it's very close. To, to those ideas, how do you keep the spirit of everyone in the group up and how it goes yeah, down absolutely. this darkness? It's 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 funny how it's emotional and psychological without staring at it directly. It's an indirect thing, which is going on. Yeah. So Tom, are you happy yeah, with your opinions? Are you happy with your opinions yeah. on free league, or you got more questions? <laughs> Ask us more questions. Ask us more questions. What else am I doing at the moment? Hmm. Yeah. My day is mainly just planning stuff. That is that is all I'm doing. Uh, yeah, getting... I'm currently writing up the newsletter to announce some uh, exciting, shiny new stuff with the books. Ooh, any scoop? Uh, no, I'm not allowed. To, I'm really not allowed to say <laughs> some of them. Yeah, um, just like we have some new uh, IPs that we're um, picking up that are non Asmodee. Um, so we do have a license with Marvel to write official Marvel uh, Whoa, books. Really? Um, and that has been yeah. So that has been announced. So I can say that, um, but I'm not allowed to talk about what the books are about. But we have them coming out from September. Um, so we need to just talk to Marvel and uh, then we'll do a big press release about them. Ooh, but yeah, no, we, we I got so many official... questions. I'm wondering so much about I mean, it's interesting because Marvel, as far as I know, it's not, the, the copyright is not uh, fragmented as much as it used to be. So if I'm making just wild assumption, if you are in touch with Marvel, it could be literally the MCU, could be the comics, it could be, mm, could be loads of things that sounds... That sounds very yes, exciting. Yeah, 
and we we def and we also signed a deal with Dark Horse Comics yesterday. Um, so we are doing art books for Arkham Horror and Keyforge and all of the Asmodee sort of IPs. We're doing big art books with them as well, um, which has yeah just announced. So that's very exciting too. Yay! We've been uh, we've been using our time wisely the last couple of weeks. <laughs> Yeah, oh, actually, office distractions. <laughs> I was thinking it's quite interesting that Keyforge now having a role-playing game, and in parallel, uh, Wizard of the Coast is turning magic into a setting for Dungeons and Dragons. And it also, on on the other end, it reminds me of uh, a lot of RPG publishers going into the realm of board games because they are more valuable it's, it's quite interesting all this synergy going on between products yeah. uh, and them crossing novels comics board games although from what i heard tsr was not very lucky with with comics back in the days <laughs> but uh really? yeah so so when you your work involves all those different platforms at once when you you do you work on the the pr of them yeah yeah, so I, um, yeah, we're working on the board games, the car games, the RPGs, the novels, um, and I, I'm doing all the marketing, publicity, and promotion for like all of it. And it's, it's my, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm in this job because I get to just nerd out about all of the things that I love. Um, and we play board games at lunchtime when we're allowed to see each other. <laughs> we have like lun lunchtime board games. Um, and everyone's just, we're all just like super nerds who like to talk about these weird fandoms. Um, just very lucky um, that I fell into uh, this job. Yes, I've, it's very good, yeah. Do, I, I don't know if those things would be uh, uh, classified, might not be the right word, but uh, do you know if there are any surveys regarding how, how often people cross from what platform to another, like someone who just into fantasy novels and science fiction novels reads the key forge novels and then at some point thinks oh well i might try the card game as well or i might try the the role-playing game uh, i'm curious how much transfer is going on and if you you actually i assume you are proactive trying to to encourage people to make this yeah. search of transfer yeah i mean we're definitely in regards to the novels like the arkham horror and things we're definitely focusing our main focus is the fans that already exist for the games. So um, I've been in contact with a lot of Arkham Horror podcasters and Facebook page managers and events coordinators for those uh, that particular game and for Keyforge and sort of getting the word out to them. That's been our main sort of push. Like, hey, you love this game and maybe you want to read a book about it as well and sort of sending them free review copies and stuff like that. Um, to get them excited because they're, they're the, the people that we need to get excited about these things. Um, but because we haven't actually released any books yet, there's no like actual data for how how much of that is what we think it is. Um, so hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be able to see people who play the game, podcasts and things, reading it and liking it and wanting to buy the next one so we can build up some sort of data. But I imagine the especially with role players who we know already are people who like to read that hopefully it will uh, entice them like the Arkham Horrors even if you I mean there isn't an Arkham Horror role play game but if you're into like Call of Cthulhu and, the, and that Lovecraftian horror that, that's what they are they're, they're based on the Lovecraft world but you know not sexist and racist <laughs> but just scary <laughs> it's uh, what was I at? I was because you you said something it brought an idea on, uh, yeah I just remembered actually Asmode it's I think it started as a role playing company because uh, yes, one France, one of, yeah. one of my act, actually f favorite French you know when when I started role playing French publisher was uh, something called Siros Team so S I R O Z uh, Team uh, which uh, among other things they they, I think they were very involved in the, the, let's say, the equivalent of White Dwarf or Imagine for for France, like the main tabletop yeah. RPG magazine, which was Casus Belli uh, back then. And the, their team was running a lot of, they, they were writing a lot of the adventures, which were the 
the central bit in the magazine which you could literally pull off of the magazine to to run your adventure and uh, i think at some point they ended up uh having the the licensing rights to to sell the pokemon trading card game in france and they made so much money and that when they became then they became asmodee or at some point just before just after they became asmodee and they, they become this gigantic player in the the board gaming uh company uh yeah. yes so, so zero steam yeah, uh, yeah they did uh, start yes yeah, a small french publishing house and then moved on from there to I'd really like to make a, a special <laughs> D-Royce podcast about the Zero team and with some old people. The problem with the French is always uh, finding people who were there of the right generation, but they're French and they, they would have to be fluent in English, which is <laughs> not always yeah. uh, possible. Uh, what, what, you know, I remember now what, what I was thinking as you were explaining. Uh, what, what I find a bit fascinating in terms of dynamics, and it's funny we're talking about Marvel and they got somewhat kind of the same situation, is how when we from a little bit of inside knowledge I've got about Wizards of the Coast is that Dungeons and Dragons despite being this huge things in role playing games is actually not profitable compared to the other activities of Asbro so I would assume yeah. when you're a publisher like Asmode uh something like the let's I'm just trying something a key forge role playing game when you look in your little spreadsheet in your columns you see what is that thing is not making that much money and i was hearing something about marvel saying oh, okay they're making all this money with those movies marvel and their toy lines and so on but when you look at the comics themselves it's it's not a business which is making a lot of money but it's but it's a place where you develop ideas and you develop new stuff so uh yeah what do you think of that yeah i think it's the, the place where you make the fan and then and then the fan wants the other things. They can have this this small cheap thing that they can just collect on their own. But if they want, then there's so much more that they can branch out into. Um, I think that's the same yeah for for what Wizards of the Coast is for Hasbro. Because yeah, I mean they are did, did considerably was... small. I mean in the UK especially, the Hasbro office for Wizards of the Coast is is tiny. Though they do have a giant unicorn. They do have a My Little Pony that's vomiting a rainbow, and that is. The best thing ever and i wanted to steal that when i saw that <laughs> <laughs> they're not even doing the my little pony role-playing games uh river horse is doing no that. that's river horse yeah and Who's... river horse are here in nottingham river horse will be on our uh, tabletop role-playing game explained to parents soon at uk games Yay. Expo <laughs> or online uh was there any question of that at asmode why do we bother with a role-playing game for key Forge while we don't expect to make any money compared to the trading cards I, I think it's probably for that same reason that um hasbro do it is that it will bring a new group into it like there are people who play the key forge game i don't like the key forge i don't like card games so um they don't interest me so i don't play them i know how to play them and i know what they're about but like for me i want to know the backstory of some of the characters that are on the cards so for me a role play book is perfect because it will give me that background that I need. And then I may become interested in playing the card game because I know more about the different factions and therefore I, I will start having my favorites and I'll want to play Keyforge. And the other way as well, if you're playing the card game, you might then be like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll start expanding my knowledge a bit and playing the, the, the role play game. Um, and I think that's, it's a stepping stone, I think, for the, the wider sort of game as it were like with the star wars uh ff like that's the same system the rpg probably doesn't make a huge amount of money but people will buy it but they then they might be interested in buying the x-wing miniatures game and they might be interested in legion and and all the other star wars things that ffg own um and so yeah i think that's probably Oh, if you could They're pass a message, way that if you could pass a message for me uh, to Asmode and the FFG team. There's a there's a ship from the old role playing game which I assume they got the the rights to, uh, which is sorely lacking in the X wing miniatures and the the new beautiful art which are is being made is the uh, G truck uh, seven twenty. <laughs> so... See, it's G H T R O C 
720 uh, which was the the standard chip for for most role players and um, had one uh, 3d printed uh, because you cannot find the, the um. proper x-wing miniature that, that would be awesome and sometimes they seem to be running out of ideas uh in terms of yeah. what to do in miniatures because it's not it's not uh extensive is that the next step also for, for to get you interested in keyforge so first the role playing game then the miniatures do you think that there could be a miniature oh. battle game there oh if they did that i would definitely be interested in that <laughs> <laughs> i would want that and i would want the terrain for it the terrain would be amazing yeah. What, what you need to that. slip it I'm, I'm gonna... next, <laughs> next, next to my suggestion for a ship, you can slip it in the idea box. Uh, yeah. Put a so, post it in it saying, uh, We could do miniatures with Keyforge. Miniatures are a lot of fun. It's <laughs> great. Uh, we got the other day a sample of a, uh, a Keyforge uh, cuddly toy, and it's like this little octopus baby thing. <laughs> That's the cutest thing in the world. As soon as, as soon as Andy walked into the office with it, both me and Lottie were like, "It's oh. ours!" And we like bounced at him, and it's like, "Oh, baby, it's the most adorable thing." I don't even. It's like a, a gruen or something like that. I don't know what a gruen is, but I had to Google it. <laughs> but, um, it's adorable, and uh, yeah, if they could do miniatures of those things, I would. I would be all over those. So would yeah. that be your first choice for a miniature? What what would be your, your first five miniatures you would have developed for, for Keyforge? Um I so I, I like the Martians. I think they're quite interesting. So a couple of Martian scientists. Um are they like yeah, old school and Martians down. like Mars attacks or they're a little bit Mars attacks, yeah. Um yeah, they're, and they have that mentality as well. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah, but they're, they're just, they're, yeah, very one-track mind, sort of science-based, um, and a little bit like just kill all humans. Um, and oh, who else? Uh, trying to think what they all who would be the most interesting to paint. Let me go to my. Uh, I have a, a, a there is. I have the secrets of the crucible book. Selecting a species. Oh yeah, I have uh, all the soaring. They're quite cool. What would you do it? Would They're it cool. be armies or something? I don't know. A bit more like uh, what was it called? Uh, Ero clicks. Yeah, like... I, it ha would maybe be a bit like Legion, like Star Wars Legion in that way that you have. The two sides, maybe be able to expand it out, and you could have like more than two people playing it. That would be quite fun. If you could have like four different people playing four different particular armies based on a different area of the Crucible, um, and maybe yes, yeah, scenarios that you play out, um, which then might affect the next scenario and the way that you build your world. So it has a little story element to it. That would be really fun. I would I think enjoy it, that a lot. It would sell beautifully on Kickstarter. Yeah, I'm gonna put this forward and then be like, "This is gonna be amazing. You should owe me some money." <laughs> <laughs> the silicons well, are cute. I like it, the silicons. It's documented now. If anyone is getting rich with this yeah. idea, I need a cut of that. It can be a minor yes. cut. <laughs> or at least, at least a review on iTunes. Please give me a five star review on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> cut the money. <laughs> oh, a good review on iTunes. That's all we need. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, what was your oh. second faction? Uh, I like the silicons. Silicons. They that sounds are... interesting. Uh, so they they are like uh, like uh, they're, they're like sort of druidic, made of the earth. And they have oh, lots okay. of crystals growing on them. So they would be, just be really fun to paint because you get to do a lot of like glowy effects on the crystals and things and that they would be fun and they're quite short and stubby they're like like little rock gnomes but actually made of rock i think they would be cute um and a sauron is like a lizard person saurian even yeah so yeah lizard people they're fun um yeah sort of dragonborn-esque i think they would be one that i would definitely like to paint up i think who else also, maybe 
maybe the humans they're like the the newest alliance um on the crucible but they they have really cool like space armor and stuff so they might be quite fun to paint up so especially if you're into like warhammer and stuff they'd be a good army to create you need to go get yes. uh, a good uh, have a grab of those show uh, games workshop shares uh, of warhammer you need uh, yeah exactly that's where the money is Very nice. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, so the 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 Andy and uh, Mark, who are the, the top people with Aconites and Asmodee Entertainment, so they used to work for Games Workshop. So Mark started the Black Library novels. Uh, Mark Gascoigne, he did that, and that was really cool. Um, and then, yeah, him and Andy have worked for Games Workshop for years, so um, we steal a lot of knowledge from that. And we, that's what we're trying to do with Aconite is make it its own black library, but, you know, better and nicer and cooler and fun. Cool. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, well, it's been an hour already. Thank you so much. And Julie, do you have anything mm -hmm. else to, to plug and maybe tell people where they can find you? Uh, yeah, I'm Anjali. You can uh, find me online everywhere as Geek Girl Bookworm. Uh, however, I have a link, which is link tr.ee slash geekgirlbw I put it in chat as well uh, I will put it in chat um, yeah you can find me there that's everything, my Patreon, my Etsy my Twitter, Facebook all of the things that you could possibly want a miniature painter to have I have them, um, yeah I do commission work as well so if you have a Hero Forge mini you want painting I can print it for you here, I can paint it, and I can send it to oh, you. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Money. Yeah, so I have a resin and a and a, a filament printer, so I can print it in resin, paint it, and then get it in the post, and I'll save monies as well. Yay. Cool. But yeah, get me um, up. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone who watched this, listened to this. Uh, through a few questions, or real status like the very awesome DRPG Academy. <laughs> Uh, if it's the only show you've watched, uh, I mean, we've got a main show called the Rollis Podcast, which you can find on any Apple podcast, Google, Spotify. We are everywhere, easy to find. Uh, it's a show which uh, we are the show of tabletop RPG fans across the channel, the pond, and beyond. Uh, we've got the release presents, which are panel, hosted on Twitch and sometime live. We've got the RPG Academy Film Studies, in which we review a movie, but through the lens of tabletop role-playing games with different hosts each time. And uh, this show, Café Rollist, at first was a strictly for people supporting the show via Patreon show. Uh, and I think this, will, this one will be episode 89, and only the Ooh. four or five last of them were available on YouTube, on Twitch, because uh, others were recorded in person. So if you enjoy this kind of informal discussions, and uh, usually they, they, they were even more informal, you can <laughs> get them through subscribing in our Patreon. And uh, I don't have the, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so I don't have the button with the subscribe or anything, but please do subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, do these sort of things that cool kids do on YouTube. And if you're <laughs> even more curious and even more of a cool kid and you're bored at home, you can join me on TikTok as well, where I engage in embarrassing myself and a lot of cringe. So yeah. I haven't been enjoying those. <laughs> oh really? Have you? Are you on TikTok? Yeah. I feel so uh, no, well, I have. I have an account. I don't know how to use it. I'm too old and uh, not old I enough. Need, I need to. I need to add you on TikTok. I feel so alone on there because there's a lot of people. It, it's it's kind of a feature. It's funny. There's a lot of people there, but it's it's a bit complicated to get in. So you it still feels intimate. You you can do. Yeah. You can dance in your. PGs and uh, nobody will realize except uh, yeah. <laughs> a few thousand people which you you will never run into. Anyway, that's the sort of content you will find on, on my TikTok. And uh, now I've got <laughs> I'm about to post a video with OC, so original characters. I'm putting on sort of <laughs> makeshift costumes. It's it's bonkers. <laughs> Thank you. And it's impossible to uh, if you see a video on Twitter, it doesn't work because the humor is about repetition or, or things. It's um, <laughs> It's complicated to explain. Just get on there, and for a few hours you'll be like, "I don't get any of this." And after 48 hours, you will be completely addicted to it. 
So and I, I look forward. And Julie, <laughs> now I need your I need to see your first TikTok. You need to go yes. there and and do I something. I need to yeah, I need to do one. <laughs> I don't know what, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work out something. You, you can do something <laughs> like I'm trying to do things by filming my RPG books. Maybe you could do something filming your your miniatures and have them talk to one another. Ooh. That could be cool. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> I'm playing a Gloomhaven game at the moment, and I painted the miniatures and I've given them backstories and everything. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of some uh... guy on Twitch got very upset with me because I did not follow the rules. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "Stop it! Just play the game." What, what you could do, like, yeah, uh, yeah, you, I know. I don't know if you've seen that that, that one um, on on TikTok. Anyway, it's you don't explain yeah. jokes. You, you <laughs> just go there and see that you could do it. Yeah, I okay. know you're not following the rules. Yes, I know, and use the the song from TikTok. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much again, and Julie. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, stay home. Wash your hands, stay safe, uh, yes. reach us on Twitter if you want need someone to, to chat with. Uh, we'll be happy to. I assume you will be to, to do so, Anjuli. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.